Okay, so there's some real simple tools here that I want to go through that I think are real meat and potatoes stuff you're going to use all the time, okay? They live up here. There's three that I want to talk about, and then we're going to talk about the right way to apply them. So, by the way, when you, I think we talked about this a little bit. When you go into mode, you have your different modes here, CMYK, RGB, grayscale, lab color. Usually I'm in RGB, gray, uh, CMYK, or grayscale. Does that make sense? So if you want to switch them, that's where you switch them. If I go to grayscale, um, image mode, grayscale, it's going to ask me if I want to throw out all this information, right? I'm going to show you another way to do that also. Because once I throw that information away, it's gone. Okay, all this, you know, the color information's gone. So let's go right here under adjustments. You have some... Uh, like auto tone, auto contrast, auto color, those sometimes those work. A lot of times they don't. I'd actually argue most of the time they don't. Like you'll you'll have a photo and you want to color correct it and it'll go super blue or super something. You know what I mean? There's better ways to color correct. Sometimes it'll hit it right on the head, but usually it, in my experience it doesn't. Okay. But I always try it. I'll give it a shot. The ones I'm really concerned with here are. One other thing while we're here, image size. So if I want to make this, if I made this, I can make this, this is 72. So if I make this any bigger, it's probably going to pixelate. Okay. It's, it, it's probably at its max that it can go. Um, if it was at 300, I could go bigger. Okay. But I can, if it's 72, I can go smaller. So if you want to make it smaller, you could do it here. Okay. And this right here is constraining it. So if I, Notice if I let go, if I click that, now these two are independent of each other. So if I want to make it taller this way and not affect the other, it would, it would do it, okay? If I click this and I change this number, you can see it adjusted this to make sure that it stays in proportion, okay? But... So that's right there, image size. Now, canvas size is different. It's the canvas. So let's go. It just makes the canvas bigger. That's it. It doesn't affect the image, OK? And if you noticed, What did it do? It filled the back part with white, right? Because there's the back. If this was flipped, let's do this. And let's go image, canvas size. It fills it with that. It's always going to fill it with the background color if this hasn't been unlocked. Now, if we unlock that, so let's go back again. Let's unlock this. Let's go image, canvas size, 40. Now it's transparent because I unlock that. Does that make sense? And if I wanted to adjust this again, then I'd have to go right here to this flyout menu. All your palettes have flyout menus. And I could go down here and go flatten image. And then it could go, and then see how it's locked it again. So I could just save it again. It should be a JPEG again. Okay. If I don't, so let's go save. Yeah, here's the JPEG options. But if I go and unlock this again, I go save. Save on your computer. It goes, it defaults to Photoshop, right? So if you have um, layers, you're probably, it's probably, it's going to default to Photoshop. Okay. Let's look at this. So image adjustments, and I'm going to go right here to levels. Now, you're going to see a lot of things that sort of repeat in Photoshop, like this format of this um, layers, this plus symbol to create something new, in this case a layer, the folder. That You'll see some of these things repeating in different uh, tools in Photoshop. Okay, you'll, you're going to see that a lot. You're going to see that. Remember the one we did where we said sample la uh, this layer and the one below to work? You're going to see that in a ton of tools. Okay, Some tools won't have it. Now, eventually, I'm assuming Photoshop will set it up where all their tools are non-destructive because that would be helpful, but all of them aren't. Sometimes there's tricks around that, 
sometimes I just make a copy of the original thing. I turn it off and I just work on a copy. I just do that, right? So what it has here is here's your mid-tone, here's your highs, and here's your darks. For now, that's all you need to know. I'll show you something with this in a minute. And I want to affect the mid the mid tones. I can just come here and adjust those. Okay. Now I can also come in here and push the darks. Okay. And I can also come here and push the lights. Okay. So I can dial those all in. Now you have these three things here, and I need to get a I need to get a. Um, does that make sense? You're just affecting the mid tones, the highs, or the darks, and it's with a slider. That's all you need to know for now. Okay. Now, this looks like it's a little bit on tone paper, but when you scan an image, or especially when you're going to do this for presentation, a lot of times what you get is you get this. I'll show you what you get. So somebody's supposed to be doing a presentation of sketches. You know, it's going to be sketches and things like that. And you get this. They go in, they grab the marquee tool. They cut, command C. And you get this. Now, if it's on tone paper, that's one thing. Now, what I would do if it was on tone paper, I would probably try and dial this in. and kind of fill it with the same tone and then I take my uh, layers and or my uh, levels and I kind of try and level it off where it sort of disappears. Does that make sense? Because I don't, I don't like things with a box around it. But let's say that this is, and also you'll notice when you scan an image, they tend to be There'll be some gray, like one side of the image will get, will get gray, or the whole thing might be a little gray, or there's just, you know, it just doesn't scan totally clean the way you would think it would, at least on a flatbed like this, okay? So what I would do is, let's turn this to, let's so we can pretend it's on white paper and it's just got a gray problem. I'm gonna go here and go mode, grayscale, and I'm going to say don't merge, discard. It's basically a grayscale image now. But I'm going to go back to my levels. And these three things here, in this case, we're going to use this one, which is the white point. And I'm going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the computer this should be white. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. And see how it cleaned it all up? Because it said... Normally, it's not going to be all that gray around it, but you can see it worked pretty good even with a gray background. It eliminated it. Now, I might go back to that and go, I want to punch it a little bit. Punch this a little bit. I've got a little bit. Now, another thing that I do before I do that is I will go, I'll take my polygon lasso tool and I'll go really close on this and I'll make a selection. Get it as close as I can there. Then I'm going to go up here to select. So just remember this is a selection. I want to affect it so it's under select. I'm going to go inverse. So it, what it did is it just took that selection and made it the background. Okay. And I'm going to go delete. And I usually do that before I do the white balance thing. And then I'll come in here and do that. See, it got a cleaner. What if I have here, I have like a, a tone paper background. 
So let's mix up. Let's just get. Let's see if we have something here. I don't like the way they did this. Uh, they changed this, and I just don't like it. But anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to have to go back here, go mode, and go back to RGB color because I'm in um, don't merge. I'm in grayscale, and I want to go back and put some color. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to just make sort of a uh, tone paper kind of thing. So let's just say that's tone paper. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. So again, I, I tend to throw colors down in the computer, and then I just adjust them. I just get them in the ballpark, and I adjust them. So a lot of times you'll see me throw a color down, and you're like, whoa, that's screaming. I'm going to adjust it. I just, I just want a blue to start. So in this case, I'm going to go Levels. I'm going to bring up the lightness a little bit. And let's pretend that's tone paper. But now I have this. So now we're going to go back to our... And with black and white drawings, this always works, as long as you have it zeroed out to white and dark. Okay. You go to our overlays, which we were talking about last time, and we go multiply, and now it just sits on the surface the way it's supposed to. Why? Because black, multiply, it's the one overlay that I always remember. Multiply, if you have black and white, it will just eliminate the white, okay? So now I have this floating on here, and it's just a nicer presentation, correct? Now, if I wanted to go in here, there's another thing, and we'll go into this more later. If I wanted to come in here and start to... Um, start to paint this I wouldn't do it with my mouse but I'm going to I can start to paint underneath this and I'm seeing through all that so I can start to paint does that make sense because you're just it's clear you're seeing right through it okay by the way that's how they do and we'll do a project on this but that's basically how they do comic book coloring right and we'll do an exercise on that okay Brightness, contrast. So brightness is basically what it says. It's going to go brighter or darker. Okay? Contrast is just what it says. It's going to push the darks and the lights. If you notice there, it gets washed out. That's less contrast. Push it over here, it gets too dark against the lights. So, I mean, sometimes I use contrast. I actually tend to do that more with levels. I, I tend to adjust the contrast a little more with levels. Okay? But that's just all personal. And then we want to come down here to hue saturation. So this is basically what it says. So here, up here under hue is just the color spectrum. So if I float through this, it's just going to float through the color spectrum. Okay. This one is saturation. So I can oversaturate it to death or I can completely desaturate it. Okay. And then this one is just lightness. It's sort of the same thing we just had on the brightness contrast thing. It's just brightness. Okay, hardly ever use that. You can see it sort of washes things out because it's lightening up everything. So it sort of washes everything out. Sometimes it's, it's useful for things, but not that often. Now, what I do all the time when I'm like painting or anything, like if I put this, I don't know if it'll do it with this color because it's so neutral. But if I put a color in here, like on a painting, I'm going to have a sky, and I go, well, the sky's blue. But then I might go to that hue saturation, which is control U is the hotkey, by the way. And I might just burn, I might just go through this whole spectrum just to see if there's a better color. Does that make sense? And then I might, you know, and a lot of times it doesn't give, it's not going to give me the exact color I want, obviously. It's, it's going to give me blue, red, green, whatever, the spectrum, purple. But I can go at it, and I can go, okay, let's say I like... That blue, I actually do like that blue. But I might go, it's a little too saturated. I go back to my hue saturation and I desaturate it a little bit. Or I saturate it a little more. Okay, but I can just dial those in. I always use that tool to double check my color choices. Because sometimes you'll slide through it and go, whoa, that purple looks really cool. You know what I mean? So that's hue saturation. 
let me see, adjustment. Now, now, okay, so, but here's what we want to do. We want to work non-destructively, correct? Okay, so we don't want to use these here because they're destructive, correct? So we're going to go down here to our layers palette and write, okay, so we talked about this. Here's your trash can to throw a layer away. Here's one to add. Here's a folder. And now we're doing, we're going to do these two, hopefully. We're going to do both of these today. So this one is called adjustment layers. So now I can go here and go hue saturation. It has all your kind of typical tools, basically, right? And I'm going to go, I'm going to saturate this. I'm going to change the color. And I'm going to make it darker. And now tomorrow I come in here and I go, well, that's hideous, right? I can just click here. I can turn this off for one thing, and I have my original, okay? Or I can go here, and I pull this back up. One of them, I think it's this one. We'll, we'll just reset the, the whole tool. Does that make sense? So that little curve arrow will just reset. It'll eliminate it and set it all back to zero. Okay, so if I make a huge mistake like that, that's probably what I'm going to do. But if I come in here the next day and I go, well, it's just a little oversaturated, a little too dark. I'll pull this up. I'll desaturate. I could just adjust again. When I, when I apply these tools through up here destructively, I can't readjust them. When I go back, they're set to zero again. Okay. So we have, there is our hue saturation adjustment filter or adjustment layer. Then here's levels. So I can do this. It's just the same tools we just played with. And it's under properties, by the way. And then I go, okay, that's that. Now, again, I can double click this. And I could go right here. And I can go, I don't like this. I can click this little U thing. And it'll just reset it back to zero. Okay? Or you can do this. See this little eyeball? I can turn that off and on to see how I like it. So there's the original image, there's the affected image. Does that make sense? And we're going to play with these in a minute, so don't worry about it. Okay, and then I got, there's hue saturation levels, you know, all these different things. But here's a cool one. What was the other one I did? And by the way, if you notice, if I go up here now to my image adjustments, all oh, they are here. I didn't think I'd be able to adjust them here. Uh, hue saturation level. Oh, and brightness and contrast. So brightness and contrast probably is in here. Yeah, there it is right there. So sort of your standard tools are in here, but here's a nice one. So I can take these if I don't like them, and I can just throw them away. And I can go right here. There's a black and white one here. And I really like this filter because it breaks down the color spectrum in black and white. So I can come in here and really dial in the drama of this if I want to do that. Lighten up all these trees down here. And I could do a lot of tweaking with this. Get it look really, you know, I can dial it in where it just looks really good, or I can dial it in where it's really dramatic, okay? For whatever the reason, the magenta doesn't usually do much. This actually is a little bit, okay? Well, let's tint. And I can tint it. If I want to do that, I can turn that off. Again, I can look at it this way. Now, here's another thing, you guys, we, we just touched on. So sometimes with this kind of a black and white image, I might, have, I might have an area that's, I go, this all looks really good. I like this. But this area over here is too dark or maybe too light, but too dark. Like, I can come here and go to my Dodge tool. Dodge just goes lighter, and then right below it is Burn, and that just goes darker, okay? These are all darkroom things, okay? So I got dodge tool. I'm going to go to a bigger brush. I'm going to go to a soft brush. I'm going to lower the opacity. That's probably. 
And maybe I want to bring this up. See how that lightens it up? Now, you got to be really careful using that because if you overdo it, it looks really terrible. You got to use it like that's already too much. If, if I can see it, it's see the exposures at 80. That's way too much. So I'm going to drop it down, make this bigger. And I can just sort of subtly light that up. So I might do that with a, with a, a photo, especially a black and white photo, where I just want to bring something out, but I don't want to affect the whole overall value. Does that make sense? Or vice versa with the burn tool, okay? So now let's look at... So I could take this because somebody's just talking about how it, looking to do an, make it look a little older, okay? I just grabbed this off the internet. I would grab a better one. I'm going to pull this tab out of here like that. It's just easier. Get my move tool. Let's go to here. Grab my move tool. I want to put this back in the dock. Where's my cityscape? Hang on. I'm going to do a no-no and make it bigger. And then again, this is black and white, so I can go to my multiply filter. Or, you know, whatever works. Let's say it's, that's kind of interesting. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to drop this down. And I can start to get a little bit of a distressed, you know, this distressed look, right? And, and when, when you're using a black and white thing like that, you can just go to multiply. It's just going to eliminate the white. If you have something that's color, now whenever you have something that's color, it's going to be a whole different ballgame. Then you've got to sort of go through those and find out which one kind of works, okay? Because the color underneath is going to affect the color on top, and the color on top is going to affect the color underneath. So you just have to make sure that you're adjusting that and finding the right one. Sometimes it, there isn't one. Sometimes there isn't an overlay that really works great, and you've got to find another way of doing it. Okay? But you can see, like, where, given a little bit of that worn look, that works pretty nice. Okay? Especially, normally I go with the darker thing, but the white actually looks nice because that's kind of what it does. It wears out, wears off. If you look at your hue saturation... Image, adjustments, hue saturation. You can actually break down the channels of your saturation or your uh, hue saturation or your, ch your color channels. So I could go in here and go just to reds. Then when I saturate this, it's going to saturate the red elements only. Okay? Or I can go in here and I can go blue. Let's get rid of that. Let's just go, we don't like that. But let's go to the, let's maybe the sky. Let's go to this. It has two blues in here. It has cyan and blue. So I'm going to, see, it's picking up all this down here, right? But it's saturating the sky. And then I'm going to go to the blues. And then Luke noticed something that I forgot about, completely forgot about. But... Actually, I can't do one here because I didn't make a... Um, let's do this. Let's put a, another adjustment layer on here. We don't want... We want that. Let's go... And let's do what we did. Oops. Let's put an adjustment layer. Hue saturation. I'm going to go to the red... Or let's go to the blues again. I'm going to dial up the blues. Let's say I want the sky to be really blue, but I don't want all this other stuff. This right here is a mask, which we're going to talk about here in a second. This right there is a mask, that white thing. So I'm going to grab, I think, Luke, you did it with an eraser, right? In theory, it shouldn't work. And I want to come down here. Yeah, it's not working. So I'm going to go to, a, I'm going to, go to my uh, brush, and, a, and I'm, I'm going to zero these back to black and white with this little thing here, and I'm going to put black in front. And then I'm going to come in here, and I'm painting out the mask. You can see it right there. See that dark? That means I'm punching a hole in the mask. So what I'm doing is I'm painting out all the blue down here because I don't want that much blue down here. I want just the sky to get blue. 
So I'm just going over this and I'm just painting out the mask. So now I could do it where it's just, and the reason I'm saying this, like sometimes you want to do like old black and white photography look. So this is going to be straight up a layer mask. So we're going to do this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to open this cloud file. And again, this is just the way I like to do it. I pull this tab out of here. I'm on my move tool and I just pull it into the next thing. And I'm going to put this, I unlocked that, that layer, I've unlocked everything now. This, I'm gonna go Control T, I'm gonna make this big enough. Now I might, lining it up, I might lower the opacity here so I can see exactly where it's lining up, like that. Let's do it like that. Then I'm gonna go back up to this and I'm gonna put this underneath. And now, okay, so now we've done, here's your trash can, here's adding a layer. And here's the folder, here's our layer adjustments. And now here's layer mask. So I'm gonna make a layer mask and there's that thing that we just saw on the adjustment layers, correct? Now here's the thing with the layer mask. You have to zero this out to black and white, which you can do right here, you click this. And then if you wanna flip it, you click that because we want black in front. The way, I, if I remember right, it's black reveals, white conceals. By the way, if you hit X, it will flip those two, uh, and it's really good for what we're about to do. It'll flip those two um, swatches. Does that make sense? You can just hit X, not Command X, just X, okay? Then I'm gonna get a, you know, uh, a brush, not an eraser, because your brain will go, well, this is erasing. It's not erasing. It's painting the mask in, or it's painting the mask out. That's what's actually happening, okay? So I'm gonna make this really soft, and I wanna lower the opacity quite a bit on my brush. Make it pretty big. I lost my mask, so I'm gonna put a mask there again. So now I'm on this mask. If you notice, it's linked, this little chain right there. And I'm gonna come in here And I've got the opacity really low, so it's nice and subtle. And see how you can paint that? See right there, it's painting the mask out. So what this is doing, it's like having a piece of paper and you cut a stencil out and you're looking through it, but you can paint the stencil back in. That's all it is. Does that make sense? And you can have soft edges and hard edges and whatever you want. You guys have probably seen this in like 10 million movie posters. Okay, they do this, I just saw one, okay. Oops. Okay, now here's the beauty of it. I can go X, flip that to white, and I go, well, I don't like it up here. I can paint it back in. Or if I overspill like I just did there, I can paint that back in. I can go smaller, paint that back in. You know, and I can maybe paint wherever I don't want it. I can paint it in and out and get it perfect. Does that make sense? Okay, so you gotta have your image on top. Then you make a layer mask. Zero these two, black and white. You can flip them by doing Command X. Black reveals, white conceals. Does that make sense? I'm gonna give you this link.